Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Design It Green. My name is Carter and today I want to talk about some essential habits that I've picked up in the last year that have helped me tremendously. So when I was brainstorming for the creation of this video, I was trying to think of some habits that would apply directly to architecture and design and also just some general habits that would help overall in your day-to-day -day life. And honestly, what pushed this change for me was just COVID. It forced us to retreat from our active lifestyles and kind of hang out back at home. We didn't get to see friends or family that much anymore. And that really had me kind of speculating and spending a lot of time by myself. So to make a long story short, I had all of this extra time that I didn't really know what to do with. So I, I kind of just ended up focusing back on myself and I ended up developing a lot of different habits just from trial and error over the past year. So the habits that have stuck with me over the past few months are the ones I would like to share with you guys today. We'll start with some habits that apply directly to us designers, which is to drop more. First of all, being able to draw quickly and effectively is a great communication skill for us to have, and it allows us to be able to communicate ideas on the page that we wouldn't necessarily be able to get across verbally. I've also just found that sketching every day has just been a huge stress relief for me. You have this kind of empty canvas and you can do whatever you want with it and there's no timetable when you got to finish it. So you can, you know, pick up and put down whenever you please, which is really something we don't get much anymore as designers. But in order for this to really work for me, I had to really find something that I like to draw first that kind of eased my way in to the whole architectural sketching. So the way that I got into it was by pretty much just tracing things that I liked on my iPad for 10 to 20 minutes for like two months. And then I've slowly started to branch out of that and do my own things based on things I've learned through tracing. So try sketching for 20 minutes a day for the next 30 days and you'll be surprised at how much you improve and hopefully develop a great habit to have as a designer. The next habit is a big one, and that's learning how to deal with criticism. Criticism is unfortunately a major component of architecture and design. So if you don't learn to deal with it and accept other people's opinion for as they are, then this field is honestly gonna eat you alive. The perfect example I have of this is my very first design crit. I remember getting so upset that my peers or my professors didn't see that vision that I had for the project. And it really, you know, it drove me nuts because I spent all this time on this project and it really got little to no feedback or feedback that I didn't necessarily want. And over my four years as a student, I kind of just learned that some are gonna love it, some may hate it, and some may be indifferent. And that's really just how your design is gonna be viewed and, and it is what it is. At the end of the day, you just need to be internally proud of yourself and all the work that you've accomplished over either a half semester, semester, a year, however long it may be, just be internally proud of what you did. But by doing this, you're able to see a different perspective and you give yourself a chance to look in a new direction and sometimes it may be the better direction to go in. So the criticism might not be where you wanted to take the design, but it might end up being where it really should go. So of course, this is a tall order, but if you can get better at this slowly over a couple of years, your life is gonna be greatly improved for sure. The next habit for you is to read for 10 to 20 minutes a day. The reason I believe you need to read for 10 to 20 minutes a day is because it can help you expand your horizons and create new ideas that you haven't thought about before. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I hate reading and I still partially hate reading, but I really forced myself to kind of develop this habit and the way it worked for me was by finding a genre that I really liked and had a natural interest in. So once I found this, it became naturally more easy to read and it's actually something I kind of look forward to before I go to sleep now. So try reading a little bit every day and trust me, this will pay off. Even if you're just looking at like a magazine or a picture book, it really helps you kind of ground yourself and it's a great way to wind down at night, I think. The next habit is the most important habit you need as an architect or designer, and that's to become a better listener and observer. This is so important as a designer or architect because we need to be able to tap into the mind of others to create the best possible design scenario. 
Because at the end of the day, these designs aren't for us. They're really to be experienced by others. So being able to get into the shoes of others and think about what they would think is paramount to our success. So the challenge I have for you guys is next time you're out at your favorite restaurant, place, park, think about what makes that space enjoyable to you. And when you're there, take a look around at the others and see what their expressions are as they move through the space or may sit in the space. And also think about where your eyes are drawn to when you first arrive at the site, as you move through the site, and as you sit in the site. Where do you want to be? Where do your eyes take you? To the everyday person, you do all of these things unconsciously. You don't even realize you're doing it. So for us designers, we really need to be able to consciously think about those things so that we can hone that in later when we're back at the office and apply those to our designs to make them really successful. So if you take anything away from the video, this habit I just mentioned is the one you definitely need to think about more. All right, so that's enough designer architectural habits for you guys. Let's talk about the more general ones. The first one is the infamous morning routine. Now the morning routine is so important to me because it sets the tone for the entire day. The difference for me when I'm on a good routine rather than just hanging out in bed and kind of having a slow start is not even comparable at all. I have way more energy, I'm way more productive, I feel way better throughout the day. It's just, it's not even comparable. I also just feel much less stressed throughout the day and I feel much more prepared for the obstacles that might come my way throughout the day. I start by getting up at the same time every morning. I only have one alarm. I don't hit the snooze button five times. I used to do that, but we're, we're grown. We're doing bigger things now. <laughs> Next, I sit up and drink some cold water because that brings me back to life. And then I make my bed. Then I get dressed. I feed my fish. I change my daily calendar and my vitamins and I'm ready for the day. Then the last thing I do is I stretch for about 10 minutes before I head over to the gym and I just kind of process what is expected today and what I need to get done today. But that's it, it's pretty simple. It doesn't take a lot of time. It takes me about 15, 20 minutes every morning and it sets the tone for the entire day and makes such a huge difference. It really does. The next habit is to start writing stuff down. I swear when I turned 21, I literally forgot everything. So what I decided to do was to buy these little mini sketchbooks and bring it with me literally everywhere. It fits in my pocket. It's perfect size for me. And it just lets me write anything down that might come to mind at any time. And if you don't feel like carrying one of these with you all the time, you have this other thing that you carry with you 24 seven and that's your phone. And that has notes built right in there. And it literally takes two seconds to write some things down and it saves a ton of time in the long run and really saves you so, so much. But the reason I say this is when you write stuff down, you're generally more prepared for what's to come and you always are less stressed when you're more prepared. So don't sleep on this habit. It literally takes less time than sending a text message to your friend, which you definitely do too many times a day. All right, now the next habit might not be for everyone, but try exercising for 30 to 60 minutes a day. Trying to exercise every day is a great goal to have. It helps relieve stress and it has so many health benefits across the board. For me, I like to exercise in the morning just because it gets some energy out right out of the gate and it helps kind of ground me for the rest of the day and gets kind of my blood and oxygen flow up and sets me up well to kind of be okay with sitting for eight, nine hour periods at a time. Not to mention that consistent exercise helps with your diet a ton. It's honestly so underrated. The exercise makes such a big difference in my daily diet and it helps me stay more full throughout the day. And if you don't wanna to go to the gym, that's totally fine, I get that. Um, one of the things I found was to walk for about 30 minutes a day after work um, with maybe a friend or in your favorite location. For me, it gave me a moment to kind of reflect and relieve some stress after a long day and kind of act as a nice transition from the work day into your home life with your friends and family. So of course, try to find an exercise that you enjoy and try to start implementing that into your life three days a week. And the final habit on this list is the most important habit you need in life, which is to make time for the things you enjoy. And yes, I know your life is packed and you have a ton of responsibilities and you don't have time to do anything you like. The truth is you're never gonna have time. So you need to make time 
or your time will just blow away like the wind. And to make time, you have to get better at managing it, which I know is easier said than done, but the better you can get at managing your time, the more ways you can start to implement things that you enjoy into your daily life. But as you know, the quality of your life is gonna improve so much when you can start making time for things that you enjoy. Even if it's only for an hour or two, twice a week, it makes all the difference. It's something that you look forward to every week, and it's something that you can kind of build your week upon which you didn't have before. This is something that I struggled with when I transitioned from the college life to the workplace life. So this is one of the biggest things that I've learned since I graduated. So make sure you start making time for the things you enjoy and don't let your life just go to waste because you have all these responsibilities. You do have time for things. I honestly believe you do. So those are my essential habits that I believe every designer, architect, and the general person to have. So you're not gonna be able to do all these habits at once. So start by trying to implement one new habit you learned from this video for the next month. And be sure to let me know in the comments below which habit you're gonna try and which habit you think will benefit you the most. Thanks for taking the time to spend with me today and I'll see you next time.